Aloha! Starting videos off like that now. I'm going to read some quotes and some poetry to you. This was really well received last time I did this. And actually, I think I need to adjust this a little bit. Oops. Maybe that was too much. <laughs> but I thought I would do that again today. I definitely have some other poetry books um, lying around in different collections. I literally like have little stacks of books across my room. Who doesn't? Really? Who of us doesn't? But right now I have a book in my hand, God Shaped Hole. I'm gonna try to find some quotes online. I'm actually gonna turn this light off. Hope you don't mind. It's like making my shoulder hot. But I'm gonna read some quotes from this and some quotes from actual poetry. Um, a lot of them I'm gonna just be reading from my Pinterest. I have a couple boards on there that I've been really pinning a lot of things to. By the way, my Pinterest is just my name, Hannah McFarlane. I've been really into my me, myself, and I board and Pit of the Soul. I actually think my whole term from Pit of the Soul came from a Tiffany Tate Bartolo book. Maybe it did, maybe it came from a movie. Uh, the line went something like, Pit of the Soul can't live without it love, or something like that. I think it was, Pit of the Soul can't live without it love. And I loved that phrase so much, I don't remember where I heard it from. Um, anyway, I named my board after that because I thought it was really powerful. And my Pit of the Soul board really is like what I said. I put things that relate to the pit of me and my description of it. I feel like it's so depressing, but you'll see it, so I thought I'd explain it. Uh, cling to these things, remember them when everything is dark. But it's not like my feel better board. I have a whole other board of that. I try to stay organized in my feelings. Okay, here's one. It's actually from Maya Angelou. Maybe. I don't know. Someone could have just sta uh, stapled her name onto it. The real difficulty is to overcome how you think about yourself. This one's from Milk and Honey, which I read from last time. You are in the habit of codepending on people to make up for what you think you lack. Who tricked you into believing another person was meant to complete you when the most they can do is compliment? I'm gonna turn my volume down. I just now realized that I was being a little bit loud, but I'm gonna fix that in editing. So maybe you won't notice a difference and this is just meaning nothing to you. To heal a wound, you need to stop touching it. Kind of like little nuggets of wisdom that a lot of people need to be reminded of. This is something that like kind of hit me in a big way. Yeah, it, it just really explains in one quote how I've been feeling in the past few years, specifically the past year. She knew she was really sad when she stopped loving the things she loved. And it's true. I used to love reading and not that I, I don't know, I just don't have that passion for it anymore. I don't have a passion for almost anything anymore. <laughs> that sounds sad. I'm having an okay day though today. This is from J.R. Rogue. She's one of my favorite poets. You should follow her on Instagram. I'm pretty sure her Instagram is just J.R. Rogue. Maybe it's Rouge. I'm always concerned whether I'm saying that wrong. Uh, this is something that I've held to me for a while. My biggest flaw will always be a desire for solitude. It hurts the ones I love. I shy from affection, concern, touch. I do not want to be hurt, so I spend my time with the one who hurts me most, me. I never claimed to be wise. That is exactly how I feel 99% of the time. Uh, last one from this board and then I will move on to quotes. I dream of feeling better, feeling at home, feeling secure, but I just end up feeling smaller, less alive, more prone to hurt. I don't know which Tiffany de Bartolo book this is from, but a quote from her. Fate is the magnetic pull of our souls toward the people, places, and things we belong with. Oh, this one's from How to Kill a Rockstar, which I think I'm going to reread next. I love her writing so much. I quote it a lot. I think about it a lot. In my own journal, I rewrite it to myself a lot. It's kind of like this reminder that I'm not insane for not feeling happy all the time. Anyway, here it goes. For what it's worth, I think happiness is a fleeting condition, not a permanent goddamn state of mind. I've learned that if you chase after moments of bliss here and there, sometimes those moments will sustain you through the shit. Personally, I don't like inherently happy people. I don't trust them. I think there's something seriously wrong with anyone who isn't at least a little let down by the world. That's one of my favorite quotes of all time. It's gotta be in my top five. It's like a, a rock I can stand on. I don't know if that makes sense. It's just a phrase that I felt fit, even though I can't explain why. Here's actually like the most famous one and kind of give you a reason why Gotcha Pill is called Gotcha Pill. By the way, it's not religious at all. I should have said that in my favorites video. Damn, I forget. Here's the quote that makes it all make sense. We're all searching for something to fill up what I like to call that big God-shaped hole in our souls. Some people use alcohol or sex or their children or food or money or music or heroin. A lot of people even use the concept of God itself. I could go on and on. I used to know a girl who used shoes. She had over 200 pairs. But it's all the same thing, really. People, for some stupid reason, think they can escape their sorrows. I got a little bit of chills. I still love that quote. Oof, here's one that I actually uh, wrote down myself when I was listening to a book. Straight up had to pull over to write this down because I didn't want to forget it. I try to find meaning anywhere I can. 
it's the only way I know how to validate my existence. I love that while I'm scrolling through here I'm actually finding things from Taryn Fisher who is actually who recommended Tiffany De Bartolo to me so I owe it completely to her. I'm gonna try this one part to find this one part I mean. Jacob was no more afraid of the water than the fish. He dove back under, then surfaced moments later, floating on his back. All his exposed flesh was covered in chills. His eyes glowed and his face looked phosphorescent. I just phosphorescent. I've never heard that word used. Honestly, I don't think I've ever heard it used. It's beautiful. I love this word. There's oh God, there's such an ease to Tiffany's writing and that's what I love so much about it. And sorry my camera cut off because it was overheating. Kind of lost my train of thought because I had to sit here for a few minutes. Basically, I think I was just raving on and on about how much I love her books. So that is all that I'm going to read for you now because it is all my camera will allow, but I will do another one of these if there's a specific book that you would like me to just kind of like read quotes from. Because I used to do it in my reviews all the time where I would just sit there and read quotes, quotes, quotes. I can do it with an old favorite or I can do it with a couple old favorites. Just let me know what you would like me to do and I will see you next time.